How to light boudoir photography. Here's the deal with lighting boudoir photography. If you don't have a game plan and the confidence going into your photo shoot, you are gonna run around in panic mode, scrambling, hoping to figure out what the heck you're doing and also hoping your client doesn't think you don't know what you're doing. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not sound like a good time. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you three different lighting setups for boudoir photography that will give you the confidence to go into any shoot knowing you can light your subjects in a flattering way that they will love. Also, it doesn't take much practice for this to become a reflexive thing where you just set up the lights, easy peasy, you know what they're gonna do, and then you can focus on connection with your subject because that's really where the magic happens. We shouldn't have to think about the technical stuff in our photo shoots. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer out of Silicon Valley, California, and I love lighting. It's kind of a thing. I have lit people in well over three different lighting styles, probably closer to like 30 or 40. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can light people, and I've been in a lot of scenarios that have required some creativity. But today, I'm gonna to share with you three of my favorite setups that you can use for boudoir photography. Whether you have one light or two, you can recreate these looks. You might also need a reflector, but you can get a piece of foam core. You know those presentation boards? we used to get for science fair projects in school, that can totally double as a reflector. So you don't need a ton of expensive equipment to make these looks happen. I'm gonna show you the dark and moody look that I shoot all of my work in. I'm gonna show you a more natural light look, but also natural that's dark and natural that's brighter. And then I'm gonna show you a more fashion inspired look, like an Annie Leibovitz Vanity Fair style look that you can create easily. And if you have one softbox and a piece of foam core, you can do all of these things and make some magic happen. So let's dive in and check out the first photo. All right, so here is our first photo. This is how I shoot all of my boudoir clients, this dark and moody look. This was from a photo competition I was in last year. And I was with another photographer who shoots a totally different style. And the whole idea was I set up how I would normally shoot. She sets up how she would normally shoot. And it was basically a set just off to the side of here. And we shoot our own thing. And then we swap places and shoot each other's setup. And then the judges checked out the unedited photos at the end and picked the winner. And I'm going to show you the winning photo here shortly. Uh, spoiler alert, it was one of mine. High five. <laughs> okay, so with this image, two lights. There is a main light and a rim light. The first thing that I do when I'm looking at photos to figure out how they were lit, I identify the main light or the key light. That is the primary light source in an image. Usually the brightest, providing... Uh, light on the most important part of the photo. So the light that's here on her chin, her body, all of this right here that lights the front of her, that is the main light off to the side. Now there's another light that goes here down this arm and down this arm uh, and on her bottom here, that is the rim light. And if we check out the lighting diagram here, there, this is what my setup looked like. So I had one gridded softbox right over here and it's just pointed straight at my subject. Nothing fancy, it was elevated a little bit only because there was a couch right here. So I had to raise the couch up. If you look at the shadow on her leg right here, that was because the light was coming in slightly at an angle. Normally, I do them pretty straight on, but again, because the couch, I couldn't do that, or her whole lower body here would have fallen into shadow. So the light was coming in this way. Also, yes, I just changed the color of my marker. Um, and again, this on this arm, I don't want you. Uh, this is from that light, the light on her chest, the light on her torso, uh, tops of her thighs, all, oh, this light over here, this light over here, all of that is coming from the key light. Then let's get to the second light over here, this rim light. 
Now, if this was pointed at the background, it would have been a background light, but because it's pointed back here on my subject, it is a rim light, because what does it do? It creates a rim of light down my subject. And the reason I wanna do that, aside from it just looking cool, it serves a purpose. We have a dark background here, you have shadow on her arm. I don't want her arm to blend into the background, so I throw this highlight on her to create separation from the background. If you look down here, the small of her back, there's no direct light hitting her. Thankfully, a little bit spills onto the couch here, but it's pretty tough to see where, even right in here, where her body stops and where the couch begins. I don't want someone blending into the background. It's the same here on her arm. The dark part of her arm, partially because of her tattoos, blends into the background of the couch. I don't want that. I want clear separation. Whereas this arm up here, this arm up here, there is no guessing when the arm stops and when the background starts. That's why we use a rim light. But like I said, you don't need a ton of lighting equipment to create these. So if you don't have this light over here, you can just light the front of your subject and be totally fine. Again, it just makes it more dynamic. There's more pop, it's more exciting when you see the highlights and the shadows alternating. All right, let's take another look at what you can do with these same two lights. This is the one that actually won the competition for me. And again, straight out of camera, unedited. This one is edited, but this was the shot that won the competition. So what I did here was I swapped my two lights. So I had my rim light, the smaller light source on this side, and I had my softbox, the bigger light source on this side. And I really just wanted to highlight this part of my client's body with the color gel here and make everything else in the image, I mean everything else, this other cool tone. So this is another way you can get really crafty. Same lights, I just threw gels on them and swapped them around because I didn't want this line on her to be the focus of the image, I wanted the focus to be here. So that's why I made this color pop out from the whole rest of the image. So color is another way that you can distinguish the important parts of an image from everything else. All right, let's dive into the next one. A more natural look. So this was shot actually in a mausoleum in Oakland, California. It's called Chapel of the Chimes. This place is effing gorgeous. So what we did here, there's a big open space off to the side and we've got light coming in in this direction. And if you notice, we've got highlights on the pillars on the left side here and a little bit over here also on that side of the pillar. Notice you can see her hand down here is a little bit dark, but again, uh, if I would have had her instead of arm back, bring it out to the side a little bit. She might've got a little bit more light coming in from this direction, but you can still see it. And I love the alternating shadows and highlights because that's how we create separation. So I have shadow, and then I have highlight, then I have shadow, then I have highlight, then I have shadow, then I have highlight, and then I have shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, and highlight. So you can see all the way across this image, uh, it alternates shadow and highlight. That's how we can tell every single component from the image apart from everything else. And that's what's really important. So even on the door, right? Shadow, highlight, shadow, and then highlight on her body right here. Her backside falls into shadow, but then we've got highlight over here. Then shadow and highlight, shadow, highlight, and so on that is creating separation. So like we did in this other image over here, this one, I used a rim light to create this. This image is a little bit different. Bounced light. So if you want a more subtle look, because this is pretty pronounced, and yes, I could have turned my light down. In this image, the highlight on the pillar over here and the fill on her hand and arm and the highlight 
uh, or the fill on the side of her body right here so it's not just totally black, that is from a reflector. So the light is coming from the main light source, the key light or the main light, as we said, it is bouncing off of this reflector and coming back. Now, the longer light travels, the more energy it loses. So if you're right here in front of the softbox, let's say there's 100% power. And then you go over here and you're down to 60% power. And then you hit this reflector and you're down to 30% power. And by the time it bounces back, you're at like 15% power. So the highlights on this side are four times the amount of light as the ones bouncing back on this side, which is why this pillar is so much brighter than the highlight on this side of this pillar. Also, why this one is brighter than this one, even though they're lit by the same light source, because fall off. And again, the light originates over here. It's only traveled this distance. It's this bright. But then it travels this farther distance over here. And I did dodging and burning on her body. I brought up those highlights. Otherwise, she would have been less bright than this pillar, which was not ideal. I wanted her to be the subject, not the pillar. But again, you can see from how bright this is compared to how bright this is, there's a lot of fall off in this short amount of space. And then the light bouncing back, it's barely visible here, not so much here, but there's enough that the shadows don't fall into black. And that's really all that I wanted here. And again, super simple setup. And if you don't have a reflector over here, no problem. You can go to any craft store, buy a piece of foam core or presentation board and just use that. Then we get to this one, uh, a more bright look that looks natural. Now, full disclosure, I did use a flash for this because uh, we were inside of a car and there just wasn't enough light inside. But it's the same principle. So I'm sitting in the back seat on the passenger side and I put my strobe, my giant softbox, which emulates window light on the front passenger side window. So basically the box was the window and all the light was coming in there and that's how she's lit. And you can tell because of this little catch light in her eye, you can see it on this side, those little white dots, that tells you that the light was straight this way because you can draw a straight line through both of those lights or both of those dots. They're right about three o'clock on her eyes. Also, I had a reflector in the back over here because I didn't want her to totally fall into shadow on this side of the car. And you can see on her shoulder right here where her skin creases, obviously the main light is lighting her here and here and these highlights in her hair that are gorgeous. But I didn't want these dark spots to just totally fall into black, into shadow. So I threw a reflector outside the car also, because again, normally if we're using natural light, you play with what you got, but because we are now in an enclosed space, I'm recreating what the natural light would, would do. And I wanted more light to come in through the window. We're shooting at like noon sun here. You can tell because of how the shadows are uh, coming straight down from these balconies. If we were in afternoon sun and the sun was actually over here, I could get the same effect without having to use my flash. But again, it's understanding how light works, how the sun works, how natural light works, and then you can recreate that if the natural light isn't actually in your favor. So this was a super fun one to take. Um, one of my favorite photos. I had this hanging up as a sample in my studio for a long time. I love this shot. All right, and this again is the setup. So we would be inside of a car here, right? Uh, she's in the driver, I'm in the back seat. This is where the window is. It's coming in at a 45 degree angle and then light is being bounced straight back. So from where I am shooting here, there's a light coming in at a 45 degree angle and then we got a reflector in the back. That is the same thing that you see right here. This giant softbox could also be a window. 
because uh, if you are shooting natural light in your studio and you don't use flash, this is where you want your window to be or your giant door, whatever your light source is, 45 degrees with a reflector at 90 degrees from the camera. That's how you achieve this look. And you can see on her cheekbones right here, a little bit of shadow on the side of her forehead here, and it's the brightest right down the center of her face because that is the direction the light's coming from. And then you get fall off on these parts of her face that aren't facing directly at the light source. Now let's get into our more fashion inspired look. I love this. This was for another lighting video I filmed with Intuition Backgrounds. And this is just a single light. And if you look at the catch lights in her eyes again, if this is her eye, you can see the catch light is right up here. That means the light is overhead, aiming down. You can also tell because the shadows underneath her neck are very dark and she's got highlights on her forehead, on the top of her nose, on the tops of her cheeks. So if the brightest points are at thing, the parts of her body facing up and the darkest points are the parts of her body facing down, like even her arm, it's dark here, it's bright here. Then you know the light was up top pointing down. And this was my setup. So I just had a single softbox, a 24 by 36 softbox, very standard, it's the Godox, nothing fancy, angled over her and pointed down at 45 degrees. So it wasn't directly over the top, it wasn't over me, it was in between us and it was angled down at her at 45 degrees. So this is me. And my client is standing right here. She's taller than me in my stick figure drawings. The light is up here and it's pointed down at 45 degrees. I'm taking the picture this way. So that's a side view of what you're seeing right here. I'm shooting her straight on. The light comes down at 45 degrees. You can see it's just a sideways softbox in her eyes and that's it. I love this setup. And I try and do headshots like this during a lot of my shoots because I want my clients to have something like this that they can hang on their wall, make their new social media profile, something like that. Because these photos are so gorgeous and striking. Like everyone is going to love these. They look like Vanity Fair portraits, like Annie Leibovitz would have shot. And it's so simple to do. If you want, you can also throw a reflector in underneath here and that will bounce a little bit more of that light up underneath the chin. So where the shadows are underneath her chin, tops of her eye sockets right here, those will lighten up just a little bit, uh, even on her clothes as well. Whereas if you stick another light in there, it could be too bright and you won't get the same ratios of highlight to shadow. So I would just stick a reflector right about waist level that would bounce light back up to fill the shadows if you want to do something less dramatic than this. But I think this is freaking gorgeous and I absolutely love it. So there you go. Those are three lighting setups and some fantastic stick figure drawings that you can take into any boudoir scenario. Whether you wanna shoot flash or natural light, now you know how to recreate those and you can wow your clients not be stressed out and take stunning photos every time. If you wanna learn more about lighting your clients, I have some good videos here, or if you head to boudoirguild.com, I have super thorough deep dive trainings where I walk you through seven different lighting setups, plus I have a bonus four pack I teach also for new lighting setups using one light, using two lights, using cookies and gels, using all kinds of different things, but also showing you what it looks like if you don't do it correctly. And that's the thing I don't see in enough training videos. If you have any questions about lighting, send them on over, mike at boudoirguild.com. I am happy to help however I can. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.